Hello everyone, uh, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Sarah Carr and I'm coordinator for the Coastal Marine Ecosystem Based Management Tools Network, the EBM Tools Network. Um, and I'd also wel like to welcome today um, my co-moderator Nick Weiner of Open Channels. Um, this uh, webinar is brought to you today by a coalition between the EBM Tools Network which is co-coordinated by NatureServe and Open Channels and uh, MEME, the Marine Ecosystems and Management Newsletter. Um, we're very pleased to have today uh, with us, we have Seneca Holland from Texas A&M University uh, Corpus Christi and Rick Smith from Cardo Fusion Technologies. And they're going to be speaking uh, and, and giving a demonstration of the Situ Map multi-user mapping application. Um, and we're very excited they're here to be giving this presentation today. Um, I'll turn it over to them in just a minute, but I wanted to let everyone know how to ask questions. We highly encourage questions um, uh, uh, both during and after the webinar. You can send in questions by typing the question into the question panel of the user interface. Um, and we'll accept questions throughout. Um, We'll probably save substantive questions for the question and answer period at the end of the webinar. We have time dedicated for that. Um, but clarif quick clarifying questions we can ask the speakers during the webinar. And we encourage you to send in any type of questions uh, throughout the webinar as, as they occur to you uh, so they don't get lost. Anyway, uh, thank you so much, uh, Rick and Seneca. And I'm going to turn it over to you guys now. Well, thank you, Sarah. Um, so as Sarah said, my name is Seneca Holland. I'm an instructor of GIS at Texas A&M University Corpus Christi. And um, with me today is Rick Smith, who is an assistant professor of GIS at TAMU CC as well, but also the founder of Cardiofusion Technologies um, and the brainchild behind SituMap, which is the tool that we're going to be showing you today. Um, I'm going to give a brief introduction to SitchTap and then talk about what Rick's going to show you all. And then um, if you have any questions, please, you know, we'll answer them throughout. And like Sarah said, big questions at the end, but, you know, we know that maybe we might go too fast or, you know, for some people. So if you have questions and you want us to repeat something, please just let us know at any time. So SitchMap is a multi-user, multi-touch mapping application. Um, at its core, SituMap is an easy-to-use mapping and planning tool that can be used in a collaborative, collaborative environment. It's very simple to use. Our motto is you can, you can learn how to use it and be using it in five minutes. Um, what we're going to do today is Rick is going to provide an overall demonstration of the tool. We'll go through the functionality. Um, we'll, we'll maybe do some very simple tar examples, and then we're going to do two kind of targeted demonstrations for this group. We are going to show you how SituMap can be used for hurricane planning and response, and then we're going to show you how SituMap could be used for a disaster response. In this situation, we're going to do a oil spill response. So if you have any questions as we're going through these, please ask, but now I'm going to turn it over to um, Dr. Richard Smith. Hi, yeah, thank you, Seneca, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I know there's a little bit of lag uh, between what I'm showing on my screen and what you're seeing, so I'll try to kind of take it slow um, so that it, it generally synchronizes. Um, <clears throat> if it's getting too out of whack, uh, I'm sure the moderators will let me know. So what you're seeing here on the screen is the SituMap software, and we originally designed the software uh, for touch first, which is why the buttons are really big on the screen, because it's, it's meant to be used uh, on a touch screen first, but we do have full keyboard and mouse support. Um, but it's also specifically designed to have the option of being used on very large touch screens, so think like a 55-inch touch screen or 60-inch touch screen, where multiple people can stand around it and all touch it at the same time. Because what we've seen with a lot of other mapping software, uh, and, and you know, when I've been uh, involved in re uh, disaster responses, and of course just <clears throat> through the mapping uh, community at large, there's usually one person driving, and everybody else is trying to explain to that one person what to do. Um, so in situ map, uh, there's there's no one driver. Um, if if five people want to touch the screen at once, <clears throat> it'll accept all five inputs and do something with that. So. So we, we, we like to think that it replaces that paper map that people tend to stand around and look at and talk about. Um, this really is sort of the digital version of the paper map. Um, we, we make a lot of assumptions for you so that you can just get in, get some ink down on that paper map, if you will, make some decisions, 
and then share it very quickly and easily. So uh, let me just start with with the basics. Um, <clears throat> so you can you know drag and, and zoom around uh, just like you would with any other map. Uh, you can rotate the map uh, 360 degrees if you choose, but I have that locked for now. You can also zoom to your current location uh, by clicking the location button, and that'll zoom to where it thinks you are. So if you're connected to a cell phone or something like that. Uh, it'll pick up your, your latest location. Um, once you're at the location in which there's something interesting, so for instance, let me move over to our bookmarks and move over to uh, our campus. Then you can start to just very quickly make plans as if you're using that paper map, right? Because simplicity is the key here. We want all the stakeholders to be able to interact without them having to uh, attend a long training class. So if we're looking at a and Corpus Christi, we can do things like draw. So I'm going to go to our drawing tools, and I can just use my finger, or in this case a mouse, and just very easily just draw on the map. So I'm going to uh, circle campus there, for instance. And anything I draw on that map will stay on the map, so you can see it's connected to the map there. I can even erase very naturally. So if I only wanted to erase part of the line, I could erase part of the line. Or I could erase the entire thing if I wanted to. So again, we're trying to just kind of replicate that uh, paper feeling that a lot of people are, are, are used to seeing. We can also do areas. So if I wanted to designate, uh, say, this as the red area, once again, I can just drag my mouse and I can make very complex uh, areas and I can delete them just as easily. And the same thing goes for circles. So uh, as you draw a circle, it gives you the diameter of that circle. So if you know you need an area of, say, 2,000 uh, feet in diameter, you can drag it out and then release, and you get a 2,000 uh, diameter circle. So these are the graphic primitives that we know everyone is used to using, and, and that's why we included it by default in situ map. And then we also have a whiteboard built in. So it, you know, if you want to go to a, a blank screen to really kind of talk about everything or maybe get some ideas down, uh, we also have a white screen built in. So again, just we're thinking collaboration, getting people involved, giving them around the software. Now, in addition to drawing, there's also measuring. So for the measuring, we can measure distance, area, and circle, again, with draw, uh, dragging your mouse or using your finger. So if I wanted to measure, say, the width of the speech, I can use the distance. And on the distance, I can do a straight line distance. And I just click and drag. And as I drag, you can see I get a real-time distance measurement. And then when I release, now it becomes a movable um, text on the map. So I can actually move that around and put it where I want it. Let's say I wanted to measure the uh, area of the sand on the beach. So I'm going to just go to the area, and I choose the color I want to use. So I'm going to use green for this one. And I'll just once again kind of drag and digitize around. And I'll do it a little quickly. There we go. And so now that gives it to me in square feet and acres. And then lastly, for a circle, if I uh, need to know the uh, area of, say, like a holding tank or, or something like that, I can drag a circle. And when I release, it gives me the readings of that circle. And so right now, you're looking at everything in Imperial. Uh, it's just good to note that we also support uh, metric and nautical. You can see we have the option to change from Imperial to metric to nautical. So that way, you can get uh, the different types of measurement units uh, that you want. So after the, the drawing, really the last thing, uh, there's only two more things I'll show you kind of in general. Then we can dive into some of the other uh, software options uh, as we run through our scenarios. Um, one of them is push pin. So over on the left, we have a whole bunch of push pins that can be added to the map. And there's a lot of them that are just built in. Um, and then, of course, you can create your own. So for the ones that are built in, let's say we want to add a boat, um, the location of a boat. I can just touch and drag that boat out onto the map. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller here. There we go. And that adds that asset to the map. And so once again, it sticks to that map. And I can even give it a label or, or, or say, uh, the call number. So this is, you know, uh, B1, something like that. And we can have as many of these push pins as we want on the map. Uh, if you have four people standing around, they can each individually at the same time move the push pins. They can draw on the map. So again, just keep in the back of your mind collaboration, allowing people to really work together. If there's a push pin that we don't have that you want, uh, we also allow you to create push pins on the fly. So if you press the import button, you can choose any picture on your computer. So here I've downloaded a picture of oil boom from the internet. And I'm going to click open. 
And what that does is that creates a new oil, man, uh, oil boom push pin. And so now you can see that picture uh, shows up inside my push pin on the map. So we, we want it to be agile. We, we want you to be able to uh, make things on the fly. And then, of course, you know, uh, we wouldn't be a mapping application if we didn't support overlays of other uh, assets. So we do have a layers menu. And so we support uh, bringing in uh, open source web map services, ArcGIS REST uh, services, web map tile services, comma separated value files, so like latitude, comma longitude, comma uh, XYZ, uh, GPX files, uh, which are commonly used with handheld GPS, shape files, and we do uh, support on the fly reprojection, and Google Earth files, either KML or KMZ. Or if you want to bring in a read-only version of the Citimap file you saved, that's your own file format, uh, then you can also overlay that. So, for example, let me zoom out here, and uh, we can do things like turning on the uh, surface weather. So I'm pulling this from a web map service from NOAA. Give it just a second here to refresh, and then once that uh, comes in, as I let's say let's zoom back in, you can see that we have the individual uh, readings from the weather station. And we're streaming that from the internet. Same thing with uh, surface wind speed. We can uh, get that from uh, NOAA, for instance. Or we can even get the surface wind velocity. So as those uh, arrows, there you go. So now you can see that the, <coughs> the arrows show the wind velocity. So very easy to uh, overlay uh, layers. Very easy to add push pins and draw and measure. And so the last thing would be, how do we get it out the door? Um, so if you press share. What that'll do is it'll uh, connect to your Dropbox account. It'll take a screenshot and it'll upload uh, this file to Dropbox. It'll generate a QR code that people that are standing in the room could use to scan it with their phone and text out a JPEG of the screen. Uh, or they could even put in the email addresses and email out this map. And they can email out the Stitching Map save file, a screenshot, or even a Google Google Earth file, uh, because you know not everybody is going to have <clears throat> Situ Map, and Google Earth tends to be a pretty good uh, middleman in terms of file format. That's one way to share, the easiest way to share. The other way to share is to go to the Save file and click Save. And you can save in the Situ Map file. You can also save everything we've done on the screen as a Google Earth file. Uh, which we've actually found this to be a really easy way to create Google Earth uh, assets. Uh, you can also save it out as a JPEG or a PDF. And so I'll, I'll kind of pause there. That's, that's uh, in general, kind of a real quick overview of what we think are the, the substantial things that CityMap can do. And, and we hope that you're seeing that uh, nothing's hidden in a right click. Uh, you know, it's all single touch. Everything's uh, uh, hopefully easy to see and understand uh, so that it really minimizes training and, and, and helps get people around the table and, and discussing things instead of waiting for someone to make that, uh, make that map. So, uh, so from there, uh, unless uh, Seneca, you want to direct me otherwise, I, I wanted to go to uh, maybe uh, an example of how we've used this map recently. I'm um, thinking of the uh, floods in Fort Bend County. Sure. Go ahead and show them that, right? Sure. So um, as you're working with a team, um, say out in the field, that are, that are sending back information, um, you know, one of the ways that, that we have used such a map that, and that the users kind of found out for us is to rapidly bring in drone imagery and uh, do assessments. So for, for example, in the media drawer, uh, you can import uh, media. And so you can import PDFs, JPEGs, pings, GIFs, uh, movie files, really kind of whatever you want. And so what they did is they sent in a drone image, or actually multiple of them. And so I'm going to drag that out to the screen here. And we've done two things. Uh, one, so let me zoom in here. There's not much excitement going on in this picture, um, but it, there's a few things I want to show you about it. One is we can actually draw on that picture inside of CityMap. So if there's a particular house that we want to highlight or something, we have the ability to go ahead and mark up uh, pictures and PDFs inside of CityMap. Uh, that way, again, we can have that discussion on screen. Once you've done the markup, you can actually save it out as a new file. So it's a, kind of a built-in uh, editor. But the other thing that I think is really exciting is in the lower left-hand corner, you'll see this little black crosshair. If I click that or tap it with my finger, it will actually go to the location where that picture was taken. 
And so as the drone was flying over Buffalo Bayou, it was snapping the photographs and marking it with the GPS location. And so now I can see that that's where that photo was taken. So if I want a little bit better view, kind of a, a before and after, what I can do is I can take this photo, make it semi-transparent, and I can actually overlay it on the screen. So, so for those GIS techies, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm doing a, a rectification. But I'm doing a real quick rectification, uh, kind of an on the fly, that doesn't require much training. And it's not going to be as accurate to say a, a, a proper GIS, but it's going to allow them, so I'm going to stamp it here, to actually take imagery and put it on the map in real time right now. And so it takes just a moment to, to do the overlay. Now if I zoom out and zoom over, you can now see in, in where the grass is greener, I've actually attached that image to the map, all just with my fingers. And so now that it's attached to the map, I can do things like uh, measure distance, so how far is it from here to here, or I can measure area, and everything kind of overlays seamlessly. So it's a real quick and easy way to get things into the map. As another real quick example, um, well, sorry, I'm going to finish this one. So for instance, what we use it for is when we flew over the bayou, specifically over this bridge to the west, we're able to measure the width of Buffalo Bayou on a regular day and then measure the width of Buffalo Bayou uh, during a flood. And so during a regular day, it was about 19 feet across, and during a flood, it was 220 feet across. Um, and we were able to, once the drone landed within about five minutes, start doing those kinds of measurements. And really, a large part of waiting was just waiting for the data to, to transfer to a flash drive. The other thing we can do is, is if we uh, zoom back in over to campus here, is we can also overlay floor plans. So if you have a floor plan, either a PDF or a JPEG, um, you can just import that floor plan. Once again, drag it out onto the map. Make it sort of semi-transparent here. Again, very quickly and easily, to scale and transform it to where it overlays. And so for emergency responders, they tend to like this quite a bit. Because once they stamp it to the map, now they can start measuring the distance of the hallways, uh, they can start dragging push pins inside and outside, so they kind of get a really nice indoor-outdoor view. So because that, as we drag our push pins, let me grab a police officer, for instance. You can see that he works both indoor and outdoor. So now there's a way to, to really kind of get a, a nice plan looking both inside and outside. Additionally, if you have a second and a third floor, or, or all the way up to eight floors, you can stamp that floor plan on top of this one, and it will actually all work within one menu, and you'll see show floor one, show floor two, show floor three. So again, on the fly, very quick, very easy to use, um, building a, a, a rapid map. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, clear out my screen, and let's uh, move to, uh, say, the, the hurricane planning. So in, uh, so, but, yes. So um, quite recently, we had a Coastal Bend Hurricane Conference for, um, for Corpus Christi and, and all surrounding counties. And what we did was we had um, Situmat being used by, by, I think, at one point, 10 different counties um, in the Coastal Bend. And so each county was collaboratively mapping within their emergency command center um, their plans of where they were going to put um, shelters, where they were going to add assets, and then they would throw in different things like, well, what if this kind of flooding happens, or what if this happens? And so Rick's going to take us through an example um, of one of those situations here now. Sure. So, um, so what we did to test it out was, of the 11 counties that participated, we provided them with a copy of Stitchy Map, and we gave them all a 30-minute uh, training session to, to one person. Um, and then they got set up in the, uh, the combined emergency operations center. Mm. And we just observed, say, OK, here's the blank map. It replaces a paper map you've used probably in the past. Let's see what you can do with it. And really, what they immediately did was just locating where their assets were and locating where critical infrastructure was uh, were. And then they started you know, emailing and, and sending in uh, these maps so that everyone had that common operating picture. So it was something as simple as, uh, you, you know, figuring out where water was or was not. So they would do things uh, like going up here and grabbing a water, uh, like a pipe leak, saying, okay, there's a pipe leak in this area. 
um, and they would, you know, annotate it with, you know, maybe that's, well, I'm not going to name anyone, but maybe that's one particular refinery has reported that. Or, hey, we need water at this location. Um, so, you know, there would be a, a water need, uh, something along the lines of that. Um, as they started setting up uh, base, uh, bases, uh, they would then uh, come into an area, uh, use the drawing tool, and say, okay, every, everything that's, you know, annotated as green is where we're going to have, uh, where we're going to start providing supplies to the public, right? So those are kind of our uh, muster areas. So they go out throughout the city, and they would very quickly draw these uh, green areas, saying, okay, this is where we're going to distribute food to those who need it. Um, and so once they did that, then they could create a, a Google Earth file, they could create a screenshot, and they could get that out very quickly. Um, another way that was pretty commonly used, um, and, and for other things since, was pre-planning. Uh, so there was the Fiesta de la Flor festival uh, that happened in Corpus Christi, and when you have a large amount of people uh, in an area, you need to have a plan for when they, uh, if something goes bad. So they would again draw, use the drawing tools to say, okay, you know, we want people to exit in this direction. Um, we're going to maybe put barriers um, at certain locations. And then they save that map to uh, you know Dropbox, and then make if they needed it, they could then tweet out uh, that Dropbox link, which would show them that map. Um, and, and so that's another way in which you know uh, tr trying to work through logistics. It was another very easy way that that you could easily get out to multiple people. Um, so so it's not only asset management uh, or or just keeping track of where assets are. So if you have people. Uh, moving around um, as they call in on the radio, you could uh, keep track of, of where, say, uh, your, uh, you know, where your fire trucks are, um, and, and move them around the map. Uh, so, think your planning person, um, uh, you know, who, who's on the radio, can constantly keep up with people, um, or even ahead of time. Let's say you have a fire truck on in route, uh, you can very quickly just draw a map um, and say, okay, I want you to, you know, come down here. Uh, you need to exit that way and end up right there. So this very rapid way to get things out the door. Another thing that we see the use for CityMap is in community planning meetings. Um, a lot of a lot of you all might be familiar with ecosystem services, and when you go into these community planning meetings, and you're asking citizens, okay, what why are these marshes important to you, or or where are these areas of importance, and you hand them paper maps. Um, it's great to get community input, but by using a tool like CityMap, you don't have to take those paper maps back and digitize the features off of them into something like um, either Google Map or um, Esri software. So with a tool like this, you can take tablets or even have a large um, touch screen in the room and ask people to come up and map the features that they're interested in protecting or where they consider marsh or vulnerable areas. And these also, we found that they spark conversation. Because as they see people mapping, they're, they're, they want to come and map as well. The touch screen is a very inviting environment. It, it, exactly. And, and also, since no one person really is driving, um, even though uh, you, know, you all can draw at once or use push pins at once, um, no matter where you're standing around the screen, um, you know, there's not one mouse that, that really gives one person control. So we, we like the fact that it invites that. And if you need to lock the mapping environment down, um, then we've got these two locks in the corners here. Uh, so if you press that lock, it really locks down the map. And then you can't interact with it at all. So then it turns back into a paper map, and it's kind of a safe space for people to touch without be, being fearful of drawing. and and it's another real easy way to say, look, it's all locked down. You can't break anything, right? And kind of uh, get rid of that barrier for participation. And then when they're comfortable with it, unlock the map and maybe say, okay, now, now why don't you go ahead and draw, you know, your route, um, or go ahead and you know show me, you know, what area is very important to you. And then you get you know direct input from them instead of them trying to explain to the the person mapping uh, what, what what they really intended to to have mapped. Are there any are there any questions at this point? 
Um, we don't have any questions right now, but I did want to remind everyone how to uh, ask questions. You can ask questions by sending the questions into the um, the question panel of the user interface. So just type them in, and I'll relay them. Um, I did have a question. What is the cost for using uh, SituMap? Sure, great, great question. Um, so we we have uh, a price of uh, one thousand uh, dollars for the first year, and then two hundred dollars each additional year. Um, but that's all the updates, all the data, and all the support you need. Um, for uh, nonprofits and educational institutions, we do have reduced pricing uh, for them, um, and so we usually just have a discussion to see what the budget, what the budget is, and what the needs are, and maybe make a determination from there. Because uh, we want to be really good citizens, of course. Um, at, at, you know, um, you know, to the nonprofits, and of course us. We're we're born out of a university, so we know there's a lot of research and a lot of need um, that that needs to be done. And when he says a thousand, okay, it's it's per, it's per device. Or sorry, it's per it's a per license, so that can float between devices. So we see a lot of times it's set up in an emergency command center, but it would float around. So it's not tied to one individual. It's tied to you know, it's just one license that can be moved to to you know between devices. Right, and so okay, we thank play you. A, and was there, mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead, sir. Oh, please go ahead. No, 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 please go ahead. Okay, and, and so we we wanted to do that just because you know we know sharing of devices is, is really common, um, and and so uh, we just wanted to make it as you know open as possible, as as, as easy as possible for people to, to to use it without having to say, oh well, you know, it, it's only it's only linked to my account, right? It's like, no, this is this device, use it however you wish. Okay, we do have several questions now. Did you guys? Have anything else you wanted to cover before we move to questions? Um, maybe some. Maybe what we'd cover next would maybe be born out of the questions. So okay, sure. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll start. Okay, um, the data that is drawn on the map. How is that stored for later use? Does the capability exist to export it out to be used externally? Yeah, great question. So uh, everything that's stored on the map uh, is is initially saved in our own. Dot .situmap stay file format, which is just an XML uh, file format um, that, that's open and, and easy to read. However, if you choose the KMZ, it will actually save everything out as a KMZ file. Um, and then that we found to be the easiest way to interchange everything uh, <clears throat> uh, from situmap to, to everything else. Um, but, but by default, when you touch save, it saves as a .situmap file, and that saves the entire environment. Think of it, uh, if you're an ArcGIS user, it's the MXD, um, uh, which can also uh, go ahead and package all the data into the situmap file, um, or if you want to exchange, then you can do the KMZ. Okay, thank you. Um, another question, is there a geographical reference uh, to the map? Can we get lat long coordinates for points or polygons from the map? Right. Yeah. Great question, and and uh, I should have shown you that. So we have an add menu on the right, and so when you touch add, there's a whole bunch of other things I didn't cover. Um, but let me take this moment just to cover a few of them here. The first is the chords. If you turn on chords, you can see at the top it displays latitude, longitude, UTM, the military grid reference system, and the U.S. national grid, and those are all linked to the arrows in the center of the screen. So as I move the map, you'll see that it updates those locations. And so that's where you can pull uh, uh, the coordinates off the map. If you want to go to a particular coordinate, if you bring up the address, then you can type in an address as if you, uh, you know, would so 123 Main Street or whatever. Uh, but you can. We also pre-fill the uh, inputs with the center of the map. But you can also change them here, and we help to kind of guide the user how to input them. And when you touch map it, then it'll move the map to those coordinates. I should also mention related to the address up in the upper right-hand corner, uh, we just have our unified search bar, so you can type in you know, latitude, longitude, UTM, or, or addresses that will find it there, and of course also a zoom in and zoom out button. Uh, related to uh, the coordinates and other things on the map, you can also turn on traffic, and so that shows the real-time traffic conditions. Uh, we're pulling that from uh, Microsoft's uh, Bing map service. You can also add text to the map, so just free, free Floating text. I can type. Um, let's see here. Real location. I'm gonna make that a little bit larger. Now I'm clicking quickly here. There we go. So now I have this free floating text on the map. 
Um, let's see here. We also have the ability to bring in a web browser. So this web browser will always float on top of uh, SITUMAP. So if you wanted to monitor webcams or, or uh, uh, something related to that, you can do that inside of SITUMAP. We also have the ability to bring in submaps. So this is a smaller, completely separate map from the main map. And what's great about this is if you have multiple people standing at that large touch screen, you can say, okay, here's your map down here, and you can see the outline of where they are on the main map. And so they can look at a completely different location than the main map. They can even draw on this map separately. They can add push pins to this map separately, and it doesn't modify the main map. You can do kind of what-if scenarios. You can look at two different places at once. You can even maximize that map so you look at, uh, you know, let's look at uh, Bill's map, right? What are you thinking? Um, and, and so we find, that we think that's pretty innovative and pretty different because it, once again, you know, you can have multiple sub-maps, multiple people standing around. They can all start looking at things all at once without having to go back to their own desk um, or area. So it, again, it's all open and, and, and all collaborative. And then, of course, lastly, real quick, you can also change the map style from aerial view to road view. So if you want the road map view, then, then you can switch back and forth between that. And I know that was more than, than what the question was, but, but uh, I, I took the opportunity. No? Okay. That's great. Um, let's see. Uh, another question. It seems like placing point features at a broad scale makes it difficult to later interpret where they were really meant the feature to go. Do you have any methods for addressing that issue? Sure. So, so this is where we were designing uh, SitchMap. We had to figure out, okay, what assumptions are we going to make about the users, and and what assumptions should we make to get things out of the way? So we don't ask them to create up shape files and attributes. We don't ask them, you know, what coordinate system do they want to work in. We just, you know, we make some assumptions so they can just get in and, and get uh, inked down the map. So there's a few things that we do. Uh, to mitigate that, one when you zoom out, uh, we try to somewhat gracefully scale uh, the items. Now, when you zoom, when you're zoomed out to this scale, and I was previously working regionally, uh, then you know, of, of course, we're, we we don't have the resolution to show show uh, where that was was originally located. Um, you, you can, however, uh, get access to uh, scaling the push pins manually, uh, and we do them all at once. So, if I wanted to make them really large. I can see them at this scale, I can do that, or make them really small, I can do that as well. I can also turn on and off the push pins. So if I just want to see the ink and get rid of the overlays to kind of clean up the map a little bit, that's also possible. Um, but as for precision uh, location, um, you know, it, it would be a matter of uh, the, the use case. You know, if, if you're looking to do precision digitizing, this is probably not the tool uh, to be used, frankly. You, you'd probably want to use uh, you know, ArcGIS or QGIS or something like that. But if you're looking for uh, you know, a, a pretty good uh, location, a, a quick location, um, something that could maybe be cleaned up later, um, if you want, then, then we're thinking this would be where that tool would, would uh, preside. We're certainly not wanting to replace the GIS um, uh, like ArcGIS, but we're, we're wanting to make it to where the training is, is much reduced much easier, and you can get multiple people involved uh, to to quickly make decisions. And the people that need to be doing the mapping or have that information are actually enabled to do it because they don't have to have extensive training on, you know, where buttons are located or how do I digitize and and in these kind of things you run into with a lot of the commercial large GIS packages. Right, and and, and so. Uh, we know that you know the, the, the professional mapping will, will be there, and, and in a longer response, absolutely, there, there's usually a, a GIS setup at some point, and and things work really well. Uh, but even at the executive level, uh, once you're you know looking very broad brushstrokes, so we, we tend to see this uh, being used and favored, uh, just because it, it's you know it's kind of in the moment. Uh, they can play around with it in scenarios, and and uh, and, and not everything they do has to be considered sacred. Okay, thank you guys. Um, another question, is the same high resolution imagery also available for Canada? Yes, so so, uh, so we're relying on uh, the Bing Maps imagery in the background for this. Uh, so it is worldwide coverage. In terms of update and resolution, it, it really does vary, of course, by rural and um, 
uh, urban areas, and of course, you know, some some countries uh, there, there would be less resolution. So there's no kind of guarantee that it's all super high resolution everywhere, but it does have worldwide coverage, close amounts of the world here, um, just like you would expect in any modern uh, mapping platform. Uh, if you do have more up-to-date imagery, um, then through the layers panel, uh, you know, you can bring it in through uh, uh, web map service and ArcGIS service or web map tile service. So for instance, in the state of Texas, um, uh, the state is, is uh, has contracted with Google to uh, provide statewide imagery for no cost to state agencies, um, and they publish that through WebMap Tile Service, and it's all high-resolution imagery at least, I think, once a year per county. And so it's a very easy drop-in uh, to add that layer, um, and then you can, you know, take, you know, take what we uh, we give you through uh, Bing. And then, of course, uh, add what assets you also have. But at least at a very basic level, uh, you do have a worldwide coverage of, of some imagery. OK. And, and, the same, okay. and the same goes for uh, the roadmaps as well. OK. Um, we keep getting more questions. Good ones. Uh, is there a web server component to the system allowing multiple users in disparate locations to see live updates of each other's work? Right, so that's coming in September. Um, so we're calling that Situmat Command and Control. Um, and so what that allows to do is uh, two things. <clears throat> One, there's a, uh, over on the left where I have media push pins and layers, there's a beacons tab. And that allows for live asset tracking. And so we have a free mobile phone application that we've uh, developed, we're in beta right now, that anyone can download. Um, and they just type in your organization number and then based on your cell phone location, you will show up on the map. And you can put in your name, a picture, and then what you're doing as a, as a, uh, uh, a status update. And so imagine like this little fire truck here, what's in the white box would be your status. So for instance, standing by, and it uh, gets smaller as we go. And then your name would be up at the top and your picture in the middle. Um, for organizations that have like automatic vehicle locating, uh, we can plug into that. Uh, so if you, if you have, uh, uh, any sort of system that uh, locates things, as long as the other vendor has done something sane in terms of database, we can connect to it. Um, so that's the, that's one component of live asset tracking. The second component is the ability to publish your map. Uh, so if I want, or sorry, broadcast your map. So if you have a map, you can press the broadcast button. Uh, that will then broadcast it to your organization. Then when they want to view your map under beacons, they'll see that you are broadcasting a map. Click that. And then what it does is it opens your map up in the submap first, um, which is because we don't want them to automatically, you know, put it all in your map. So you can view their map completely separately initially. Um, and then if you want to overlay their information on your map, then you can click, click this orange button and that'll add it to your layers menu. And then you can say like Bill's map uh, is now integrated with my map. Um, as for uh, how real time it will be, um, a lot of that depends on bandwidth. Um, CityMap is a local installation, so if you lose internet connectivity, it'll use whatever imagery is, is cached. Um, and we're going to keep that, uh, that same um, architecture for the command and control. But when it is connected, then it'll incrementally push up information as you make changes. Um, and, and we're trying to build in some bandwidth constrainers uh, just because we know a lot of times people are in areas with, with very uh, bad internet connectivity, and we don't want to kill their battery uh, or overload their uh, overload their data. So, so the short answer again, it's uh, we're we're close to releasing. We're looking we're looking at a September release date uh, for command and control, so people can uh, collaborate, uh, both show their location and also share their map. Okay, and just to sort of hone in on one of those points, we we had. Two related questions. One is, can you use it offline, or do you need an internet connection? And the, the other question, during emergency response, what functionality do you retain with SituMap when there's no internet connection? Sure, great questions. <clears throat> so if there's a, uh, so if there's no internet connection, um, uh, then what it will do is we again trying to make assumptions for the users that are smart, uh, and, and we hope we do them cor correctly is it will cache whatever imagery you've been to, what locations you've been to before. So if you lose internet connectivity, um, then you will see all of your cached imagery. You can still uh, measure, 
hopefully you have something to measure on. You can still bring in media. You can still do all the push pins. You can still do the coordinates, uh, the timer. Uh, worst case, you can bring up the whiteboard and use the whiteboard. Um, but things that would require the typical internet access of sharing, emailing, um, bring, you know, streaming the web map layers, uh, bringing in real-time traffic, those would be lost. Um, but otherwise, uh, you know, nothing, uh, everything else will work. Um, and, and, and by design. Okay, great. Um, also, Rick, also, Rick, do mention though that it's, you know, if you don't have an internet connection, what you can do is you can set up a mobile hotspot and use a cell tower um, to, to have such a map function as well because it needs so little bandwidth. Right. Yeah. We, we've. Uh, that's the other thing too. Is is it's it's very usable even over 3G um, and 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 2G as long as you're a little more patient. Uh, so we do try to keep the bandwidth uh, really really low as much as possible, uh, as much as we can. I mean, obviously it's a graphics beast um, in terms of you know we have to show the maps, but we are trying to be as smart as possible about it. Okay. And can you tell me about any other coastal management applications that you've seen it used for or that you um, envision it could be used for? Sure, Rick, do you want me to handle this or do you want to? Um, we've had conversations with the National Spill Control School about how it could be used um, either in training or actually when there's an oil spill and how it can be used to bring in um, PDF inventories of um, spill supplies, boom dispersants, those kind of things and other things that you'd be able to, other things that um, you'd be able to do just integrating um, push pins that are designed specifically for, um, for those events and populating the map and getting it out to multiple agencies. Um, other things that you can do, um, looking at invasive species, tracking invasive, invasive species, um, community meetings, um, really, you know, given the functionality of the tool, it's, there, there are very few situations in which I don't see it potentially being used for in some aspect. Right, and, and just okay, to highlight great. here, um, uh, on, on the screen was, uh, as she was talking, uh, in the media, you can import uh, PDFs, and when you do that, it shows you all the pages in the PDF. So you can import either one, two, or three, you know some of the pages, all the pages. And once you import them, uh, so if you have a checklist, you know again, once again, even in Situmap, you can just kind of go through, start drawing, and just you know kind of keep track of you know okay, what have I done? What have I not done? Uh, and uh, you know okay, put that back in the drawer. And now I've always kind of got that on the side as well. Um, or if you have a, a PDF with all of your pre-plans um, uh, or anything like that, you know, we can bring it in and kind of put it all into one place. But Situmap to this point has been used for community planning meetings um, where we had the general public just come in and, and in five minutes they were able to draw out um, you know, their use cases for, for a given area in Corpus Christi. And then they were able to publish all of that up and get that um, information that, you know, into, into a master um, kind of map and send that back out to, to, to decision makers. Okay, great. Thank you, guys. Um, we only have one question remaining, and that um, you, you covered it, but just uh, as a refresher, um, it was about the cost of the software. If you could just repeat the, the basic pricing. Sure. So uh, we license uh, per device installed on. It is a local installation. So it's one thousand dollars for the initial cost, um, which is uh, the software, all the uh, imagery and data on the back end, which is a, a not a, which is something we have to pay for and then also all the support you want um, and all updates. And then it's $200 each additional year, which continues to include that. Um, and then for nonprofits and educational institutions, uh, we, we have reduced pricing um, because, you know, we were born out of a university. So we usually have a discussion at that point uh, just to say, okay, well, you know, what's your need? What do you want to do with it? And then, you know, we, we, we go from there. Okay. Thank you. Um, and we've gotten a new question in. Um, can you export uh, Shape or ArcGIS data files? So we can we can read in uh, uh, Shape files. 
For exporting shapefiles, we're playing with that right now. The reason why we went with KMZ files initially is because the KMZ file can encompass everything in one file. So your point lines, your polygons, uh, your imagery, uh, sorry, not your imagery, <coughs> uh, all the data, and all of the uh, push pin icons. Um, so we started with that, figuring that would be the easiest way to go, and then the GIS pros can, can extract from there. If we save out to shape files, uh, then you can imagine for each map would have to save out minimum three shape files, uh, one for point, one line, one polygon, and then and then we also wouldn't get the text to come over. Uh, there would be some some things that would be kind of complicated. So well, we're not saying no. We're just trying to figure out how could we do it that would make sense to a, kind of a new user, right? Kind of give them like a one file to, to, uh, that would be usable. Obviously, a geodatabase would be an option, but there's issues with the Esri geodatabases and being able to write to them uh, without paying Esri. Um, we've thought maybe the spatial light uh, database, but you know, again, in the Esri world, that those aren't really supported that well. So we're still really kind of playing with that. And that's been the interesting and fun thing about developing SituMap is, you know, we started touch only, large screen only. Um, no keyboard and mouse support initially, actually. Um, and then as people started using it, you know, the ideas started coming in and the different, re, you know, the different ways that people would want to use it. So we actually then had to go back and build in keyboard and mouse support. We kind of did it backwards. But we like it because the buttons are big and, 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 and it's simplistic, right? So that, so that goes the same way with the, uh, with, with integrating with the other mapping software. We started with the KMZ and the KML because we knew it would be easy. Um, and so as, as people request more, you know, export capabilities or certain needs, uh, we're looking at building those in. So, so writing out the shapefile, we have the capability. We just haven't um, figured out an easy way to do it to make sure what they see is what they get and, and they don't lose anything in translation. Great question. And, and, and yes, uh, uh, we're aware of it. It's just we're trying to make it easy. And that's, uh, it's been fun trying to figure out how to do that. OK. Um, great. Uh, well, we don't need more questions, um, but this was a great uh, presentation and, and even more in depth than an overview, uh, really, of, of SituMap. And we're, we're very glad you were, were able to um, present today. Did you guys have any wrap up or anything else you wanted to uh, share before we end? No, I, I'd say. Um, um, would, yeah, go ahead, Rick. Sure. So uh, we'd love as much feedback as you can provide to us. Um, if you uh, go to our website, carterfusiontech.com. Please feel free to fill out a free trial request. Uh, those are fulfilled by a human. Um, so it's default 14 days, but if you need longer, just let us know. I mean, you know, we'll give you a month, two months, wh whatever you'd like. Uh, you know, we have thick skin, so we, we love to hear the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, and and uh, really just, you know, help try to make this uh, as good as it can be. Uh, we still do research uh, uh, on it at the university as well. Uh, as well as with the, the spin-out company, uh, and and uh, simplicity and collaboration is really the key, uh, the, the key tenets that we, we, we want everybody to keep in mind. Senator? Okay. Well, that's it. Well, thank you so much for, for presenting today. This was great to learn um, uh, about SituMap. And um, thank you, everyone, who was able to attend today. We're very glad you could make it today, and we hope you can join us uh, for future webinars. Anyway, and... Um, uh, Rick and Seneca, have a wonderful rest of your day and everyone else, and uh, we hope to hear from you again in the future. Thanks, Likewise. Sarah. Yeah, thank you for letting, letting us present. Okay. Bye, everyone.